Welcome to Business World. I'm your host Siddharth, and today I'm joined by Mr. Oh wait, wait, Aditya Venkatesh, right? Sorry, audio, right. audio photography. <laughs> I think we can say audio photography. I think we should address Aditya as Audi. Is it okay, Aditya? Audi. No, yeah, no, that's no, okay no. to say. That's what people call me, and that's what I've been yeah, called yeah, all my life. I cover auto as well, right? So that will make mixed. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Fair enough. Audio is fine. Welcome to Business World. I'm your host Siddharth, and today me and my colleague Rachit are joined by uh, Aditya Venkatesh, a renowned uh, influencer and photographer. Welcome to the show. Uh, photographer Aditya. only. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Welcome Come to the show. Aditya. You are definitely an Instagram uh, sensation, aren't you? Just photographer only. <laughs> very humble and very modest. Yeah. So, <laughs> Aditya, let's start. Let's start with uh, the first question. uh you're a self taught photographer so and a, and a content creator so how did you begin your journey how did you get on to the platforms the social media how did you start reaching out to people who are interested in photography right i mean photography has been always something that's interested me but it's never one of those things that you always thought you know one day i'll be a photographer in my life in fact for the longest time in my life i didn't know what i wanted to be I think the first ever thing I wanted to be as a kid was either a mechanic or a driver, um, and that holds good till today. And uh, so you were talking about automobiles, right? I mean, because for me that was literally the first thing that I wanted to be as a kid was just a driver. I don't have the skills to be a mechanic, so I tried to live out that dream. So photography was just a uh, a thing that eventually happened, and I think it's from uh, my experiences growing up. And for me, I've always believed that you are the sum total of all your experiences. Uh, so my mother's uh, somewhat of an artist, and she studied architecture, and uh, so she's always encouraged us to um, share creativity uh, in terms of drawings or in terms of spotting things in the clouds or whatever it may be. I mean, I think whatever my vision has been uh, developed over the years has been through watching my mother and the kind of activities that she's made us do as kids. Um, so. that's always been that i used to paint a lot um, as a kid i used to sketch a lot i used to sketch a lot uh, as a kid and i probably i can share some images with you later on but um and most of my sketching was you know for my biology records and stuff like that uh, subjects that i didn't do anything with in my life and you know the records were for 10 marks and i put more effort into that than the 90 marks that i had to put for my exams uh, to study the books so i think uh, somebody must have caught on to those signs early on uh, unfortunately career counseling is not a serious thing in india <laughs> though it's somebody who guided me the right way but um, eventually as it does i mean uh, and uh, the joke goes that my dad put audit in my name uh, so he's uh, <laughs> so obviously the given name and then i moved uh, towards ca cuz my dad said that's what you should do and that's i mean i guess from uh, from a parent stand point of view it's a sort of good career to take because our parents are always suggesting things that will do well for us uh, in the long term uh, but yeah i mean i tried that uh, didn't really work out when i finally decided to drop out for multiple reasons um, then i was like oh what am i going to do with my life and then uh, i was trying to figure out what are the things that i'm good at unfortunately there weren't too many things but because i've been taking photos for a while up until that point photography was something that i said you know what let me try and explore this and this is probably more than a decade um, ago so that's when that happened and self taught obviously the, the wonderful university of google uh, is where i've uh, graduated from so then uh, my parents obviously immediately said you know what uh, go ahead and uh, get into university and study photography Uh, but at that point it was like i dropped out uh, it was my decision till that point i was okay with them paying for my education and stuff but then uh, a degree in the arts and obviously abroad is way more expensive and i didn't want to sort of start anything else that i wanted to it, at that point i was still figuring out if it will work for me in my life and i didn't want that to start on a debt uh, so then i had a counter proposition which is why don't you give me 10% of that money uh, to start on my own thing and that got rejected uh, so <laughs> then i had to uh what about money i had saved during my article ship and then i did a a quick gig uh at a bpo to save up some money and then just started off from there spent time just uh, experimenting and learning interesting things article ship sounds painful 
Oh, it is uh, way more painful than it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if if you're really interested in it, uh, you you will take a lot from it. Oh no, Aditya, because I know because I did my graduation in BCom, and right. my friends parallelly were doing articleship while we were doing BCom. Yeah. So I was like, no way, I'm going to do anything related to numbers or accounting. uh your instagram is like you know kind of inclined towards travel photography portrait photography so is there anything specific that you can trace it back to like what is it about travel and people and portraits uh, and advertising photography that you know piqued your interest in it actually portraits not so much um, i'm generally like somebody who's not a very uh, conversational sort of person Uh, so for me, it's always been travel, and um, and again, like I said, you know, it's a sum total of your experiences. Uh, so as a family, from the beginning, we always travelled together. So my dad used to be in a travelling job, my mother's a central government employee, and then whenever he had the time, the first thing that he would do when he would come back from the coffee estate is immediately take us on a trip. Uh, you know, and he would be like, you know, I'm your dad, so I can you know decide when you guys take a leave. I wish he would do it at other times as well. But unfortunately, it was just when he got a break. But we always travelled together, and all of the sort of the brightest memories that I have growing up was travel related. So I think my fondness for travel came from there, and that's when we spent time together as a family uh, for the longest time uh, when we were younger. So I think my fondness for travel comes from there. And people, yes, uh, not for photography, but in terms of conversations, uh, absolutely. And again, that's something that I picked up from my dad. Uh, He's he's one of the most resourceful person in how he speaks to people and how he gets things done and where he gets information from. Uh, for example, I mean, when we used to do these trips and we had we'd have to take a bus uh, to some place, the first guy that he'd make friends with is the the bus driver and the conductor, right? Uh, and he'd be sort of extremely nice to them, and then eventually he would tell me why, which is uh, he'd be nice to them for being a nice person, but also we are traveling with two women in the in the bus, and if ever we need to stop, then they're the people who'll make that happen, right? Uh, so if you're a jerk to them right at the start, saying "Hey, dude, just stop," they're not going to do that. But if you're nice to them, they will reciprocate the same thing to you. And he's taught me that over so many so uh, people who who drive, uh, you know, and stuff stuff like that about how to understand about places that you're traveling to. Um, obviously, back then there wasn't uh, Google for you to go search up where you're going. All the information that my dad got when we were traveling was from asking locals and asking people. Uh, so I think all of this sort of comes from there. And even today, when I go, I try not to look up images of a place because I think subconsciously it affects how I look at that place, and I might find myself gravitating towards the same frames. So instead, I just speak to people and try to learn the place before I look up images or you know do stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and all of the stuff that you see on my Instagram is just daily stuff, you know, just daily observations of what I see in the world. Uh, there's very little of my work uh, online on my Instagram. Who cares, you know, what a hotel room looks like? You know, they they care more about the beautiful world around. So that's how I sort of kept it. I've kept it more personal, and you know, stuff to do just with how I see the daily world. Uh, me and Rajesh, we both are photographers. So uh, in photography, people, uh, in basically in any hobby, people tend to gravitate towards gear. I need to buy lenses. I want to buy seventy to hundred. I want to move on from crop frame to full frame, MLC, all that. People just keep collecting gear, but they are not. uh focused on framing maybe or taking good shots so you can take awesome shots with your phone as well so what's your view on this people are if you must have noticed as well people generally ask you you have taken this awesome photograph which camera are you using which lens are you yeah. using hey, it's not about that it's about you right but this is the main thing so what's your point on this um yeah i mean i think i've been through that uh, cycle as well obviously um and anybody i mean if you have the latest tech anybody wants to you know have the latest and greatest tech right i mean i, I guess that's natural um i think the, uh, the the problem becomes when you think it's only possible with that and i'm not saying that you know the latest and greatest won't help you achieve a little bit more but you already have to be at 90% for you to get to the 100 you know um it's when you get to that point then that final bit that that new tech allows you you can do more but um i think it starts with you know basics so uh, and for me the most important thing with photography or with any form of art is obviously your vision and what you're trying to convey and if you have that basis um uh, you know in a, in a set properly then you can create a lot more with it i think um, and for me it was uh, again like the hard way trying this because for me it was with that little bit of money and then like a little bit of money took from my mom that the camera that i bought it was with the 1855 kit lens for a year and a half right i have Done as much as I could, and then I got that you know really, um, really cheap 50 1.8, which had the 
worst chromatic aberration and you know softness known to man and that focus just so much sound right but then i used that for another year and i only switched from the 855 to the 50 because i was shooting a lot of parties at the time um, and then the first gig i did i think was i shot a college fest in bangalore over two days of 20 hours of shooting and i paid 1500 bucks uh, and you know then i borrowed that 50 and then i bought that 50 because i had fun shooting with it uh, so for me i learned that way but i did make that mistake at one point where i just bought all the gear in the world uh when i started doing better and then it started making me lazy you know at one point i was like if i don't have this lens i want shoot and then to you as a photographer as a or any anybody right i mean that's not if you're uh you know just saying i i'm doing this because i love doing it but then you're finding excuses not to do it then you have to sort of pick what it is you know so then i had gotten into this point where i obviously had the best of gear but if i didn't have it with me i wouldn't shoot and that's when i started focusing a lot more on shooting on my phone because it's it was as basic as it got i mean right now it's uh, pretty crazy what the phones can do but at that time it was you know one lens take it or leave it really bad processing you know if you have low light you just can't do anything but with solidifying your basics it really helped you you know um, and i needed that at that point of time so for me that's why smartphone photography became a thing and it still is uh, till today but i think uh, as long as we are going back to that point of why i'm doing this and it is because i love doing it and i love telling stories will help you reset that thing about running after gear uh, i very recently just bought a camera i think after four years i didn't even upgrade up until this point uh, so i've been sort of continuing the, the same way and i think it's from that basic stuff of having to shoot to that 1855 so i know the pain so then you upgrade from that once that can't do anything more for you of course we are in a world where uh, cameras are as accessible as you know anything like books or pens right so because of such an easy accessibleness of cameras and photography lessons you know it's we are in a world where competition is increasing in this industry right so uh, can you tell us what is it that made you stand out in the instagram community or in the online community I get this a lot, and I still have no idea. I mean, if you guys know what what brings you back to my work, please let me know. But it's just one of those things I don't know. Uh, so um, I think one of the things that I absolutely loved, and I don't look at um, uh, social following as you know just a pure number thing, but as a community. And I think that's what's uh, that I, that I've absolutely loved. Uh, so when I really started seeing people follow my work on social media, was when I was. um spending time with make a difference back in 2012 uh, so there's this organization that do uh, work with uh, children in orphanages and shelter homes and then back in 2012 early they got in touch with me and up until that point i mean nobody knew me you know, on social media and stuff um and that's when i saw, saw the sort of true sense of community right i mean because these are all volunteers from various backgrounds in life who would volunteer every weekend to um, impart knowledge and help uh, you know uh, build the the basics of these kids uh, from from english to you know yeah, giving them career studies to so many different things and it was really exciting for me to see that community but also when they contacted me for this they wanted me to travel to all of their centers across india and there were 19 centers across india at that time and i did like a 50 day uh, trip with them at that point of time with their uh, president at the time summer and you know i, I made a lot of friends on that trip and when i was traveling and i was going to different places and i was meeting these people and then when people saw me they met me they spoke to their friends about me uh, and because i would put up work from their cities at that time people started sharing and i started seeing people you know, speak about me and then that sort of grow and all of that happened because this was not uh, hey guys follow me and you know incredible things will happen it was just people from a sense of community because they were happy that i was working with their organization doing stuff and they were then talking about hey this is the photographer who's traveling in our city you know documenting our work and the city at this point of time and that just sort of blew up at that point of time and then um i've for always treated treated like that and in fact back back in the day it was uh, orkut and facebook um and on facebook i used to have way more followers than i do now but then facebook became what it is today you know it's uh, unfortunate that it went the way it did um i am sure it's still a very active community but it's just not the kind of place that i want to be in it it got too complicated um so i was almost at a million followers at one point of time but then it became tough so for me um whatever i do on social media is a part of my life but i don't create specifically for social media i'm documenting my life and i'm just sharing it versus creating for uh, you know the platform so if there is a platform today or uh, if it's not there tomorrow it doesn't matter because i'm still documenting and i'm doing things uh so when facebook got too tough for me to work with 
they reduce my reach and then 10000 people will see it from i'm like what's the point of being on this platform right so i just quit facebook uh, people who genuinely connected with me on facebook then just moved to instagram and they, you know knew i was active there uh, so if instagram becomes what facebook I'm, they are the same company i guess uh, then i'll find another way you know uh, so i th- i've treated social media like that uh, which is i'm not investing too much time in the social media but my work but i'm just using it as a platform to share what i'm seeing every day versus creating something and investing excess time for that one thing that's when i think you'll uh, you'll notice having a problem with coping with but i'm sure it's yeah. equally important to have a social media account for any photographer today because they want to show their work we are living in an age where you know people are all, almost always locked in you wake up and the first thing you do is check your phones Right. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, see, at the end of the day, all of these things are tools, um, and if you use it right, you can achieve so many incredible things. I mean, I'm, there's obviously a lot of negativity uh, there as well, and that just comes down to how people use it. But you also see these incredible things that happen through social media. We spoke about gear, so now I want to talk about uh, how important is post production. because uh, we all can click pictures but uh, the kind of pictures that we see today now back in the day we would go spend time and create a good frame we'll actually wait for the sun uh, you know early mornings late evenings but today you can easily do that with photoshop and lightroom and others so uh, but professionally that is important as well so what is your take on post production how important is it and is it really uh, you know uh, taking away the authenticity of the photographer's work um great question i mean i think it's a very important part of uh, photography especially since it got uh, digital i mean even if you go back to films and you look at contact sheets and um, you know photographers pointing out to the editors where they want dodged where they want burnt and you see the before and after it's quite drastic right so this has always been there because the photographer had a certain vision for that image and because of the limitations and the way a camera captures images it's capturing a lot more than they need or it's capturing not enough and then somebody fixes it in post so i think it's it's a part of that process and always has been uh, but like uh, rasit was saying earlier right i mean he studied uh, photojournalism i think it depends on what stream of photography you're in uh, if you're a photojournalist obviously that's not ideal you want to show exactly things as they are but if you're a digital artist um if you're somebody who works on a project that requires compositing that requires a extensive photoshop absolutely why not i mean i think it's a very powerful tool for you to create uh, so much more than what's possible i think it uh, helps keep the budget slow for uh, uh, places where you wouldn't have been able to spend as much to create something like that in real life and um again like accessibility right i mean i think uh the software is now available even on phones for people so people are able to even just the basics of adding contrast and seeing what that does you know adding saturation and seeing what that does i think people are able to experience those things a lot more but i think it comes down to if you are up front about it you know which is and if it's ethical or i mean not even ethical, but if it's right for your stream of work uh now what stuff that i shoot in, in my daily life i have a 15 to 45 second rule i don't spend more time than that on processing stuff um that i shoot on my phones and you know everyday things but there are projects where i'm shooting architecture and real estate i, I spend 3 4 hours on a photo because there are 50 layers and then i have to blend all of those different things so it depends on what i have to work on for me to do that since we were talking about uh, you know like how social media helps it it is as a tool we can use as photographers to connect with people so tell us how important is storytelling in photography and i am not just saying storytelling through your photos but storytelling through your words like you know explaining how you take a photo or explaining the setting of where you were in like maybe if you were in a forest in a very gloomy setting maybe you can talk about how you took that photo what it felt like taking that photo what what how why in the first place that subject appealed to you how important are these things as you know as a part of storytelling and not just you know taking images and uploading them yeah i think that's another great question i think um it's i think things going digital has given us that room now because i think earlier when images were published you wouldn't have that uh, you know location tag on top or you know yeah. you wouldn't have have uh, you know the place to put that it, at the end of the day it, it just fit that but now with people being able to use their own platforms and their own accounts to be a publishing platform in a way for them i think it becomes a lot easier for people to connect with you uh, a lot easier for people to know the journey to that image and also because these things are documented over time i think people can also start relating to why you're approaching a subject a certain way uh, they know 
previously when you had gone to that place this is what you tried and then when they see something the next time they know oh you know what they, and they ask you actively did you change this did you change that did you change your approach in a certain way but i also think um it is very important and this like i was saying earlier right i was a shy guy and the reason i don't do portraits is that uh, but um and i learned this with time i learned this with speaking uh, to um, you know peers and people who are here who, who who told me about the same thing which is it's very important for you to communicate for the longest time i didn't do this uh, right um and the same thing with my audience it was just photos and that's it but right now i share a lot more about everyday things because i think uh, what again the digital platforms allow us to do is to connect to people on a personal level before you would see a photo and the i know name of the photographer but now you also get to know that photographer and that increases the accessibility to talk to that person um and i think that helps you connect to yourself um and draw parallels between you about them um you know and how you find similarities between somebody who's so far away from you but just look at those few words about them i think it's i think it's really helpful uh, if you're able to sort of develop that skill as well